Hello, hello, my darlings. Hello. Let me get my um, my other microphone up and running. Oh my gosh, I left it outside of this room. Well, it's going to be a little bit hard to put it on me if it's not in this room, isn't it? Well, anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, hello, hello. Uh, a very merry unbirthday to all of you as well, unless it really is your birthday, in which case, happy birthday. Um, hello, Rogue, Ace and McQueen. Hello, Midnight Moth. Um, and Deanna and Megan. Uh, that is alluring. Hello, hello. Okay, I'm going to just kind of, you know, sneakily put this down my shirt. Now you guys can see that this is the kind of idiocy that I do um, before stream starts. Um, but there you go. And now I have to put, pull this down and then I will go and grab my microphones from um, just the room outside when we are going to get to practice. So I um, am late because I was editing and I'm sorry. Sometimes you gotta kind of just finish what you were doing. Otherwise you will completely lose your train of thought. So I was like, okay, if I'm like 10 ish minutes late, it should be okay. It ended up being more like 12 or 13 minutes late. So I'm very, very sorry about that. Thank you so much for asking about my wrist. This is just a little, um, I, I think it's, it might be a little like carpal tunnel flare up, um, that I get, up, uh, every spring. So every spring I get this, I'm not sure why. Um, it has been happening for several years now. Um, so, um, and it does not happen from flute playing it, um, more or less it happens from, um, just being at the computer a really long time, the same repeated movements with clicking and stuff like that. It's already better with a, um, uh, uh an ergonomic mouse, but it doesn't solve all my problems. So that's why i have this on because i was just i was just editing right now yeah it happens um but it flares up i notice it's like clockwork it flares up every spring when the weather is changing from very cold winter into something warmer and that transition is just really really rough on my wrist so yeah how much does the ergonomic mouse weigh oh i don't know I don't know how much this weighs. It doesn't weigh that much. It's pretty light. Um, it has it has some nice weight though, so that it doesn't just kind of like, you know, like just kind of like willy nilly get thrown all over the place. So, um, yeah, it's it has some good weight to it. Um, but yeah, I I really really like it. This is the Lift for Business by Logitech. Um, it's the Logi Lift for Business. I, I really, really, really like it. So um, my sister-in-law um, was using this and um, I we got curious and then it was on sale. And then so we ordered one. <laughs> so there you go. Um, <laughs> did I hit somebody? Is that what you're asking about my wrist? No, no, I do not have that kind of, you know how some people are like, oh, you know, if this happened to me, I would just throw hands. No, guys, I'm going to be completely real with you. I would not, I would never throw hands. I would just, I would never throw hands. I would just run away. Just run away. I am that person. So, uh, oh, I would love that, Deanna. Uh, are are you part of our like Twitch Discord thingy? Are are you there? Cause if you're there, you really should put what if you if you put a little video, make a little video, you should really put it there. Um. Uh, because I'm I'm very sure it's not just me that would really appreciate that. I would throw elbows and kneecaps and not hands. <laughs> But there you go. That, that there's our Discord. Um, if you wouldn't mind joining, Deanna, I, I'm I'm very certain so many people would love to see a little video that you put together. So, 
Um, let's see. Oh, no surgery. Not now surgery. Got it. Okay, understand, understand. Well, that's good because I don't want surgery. <laughs> But I, yeah, I really wouldn't mind some stretches and exercises. That would be fantastic. Okay, so, well, um, I, I had a very restful weekend. Um, uh, I did quite a bit of writing yesterday. Uh, that's what I did on my day off. Um, uh, the What If I review went really well. Um, I'm, I'm really thrilled with um, the reception that it has had um and i'm very happy to have um you know kind of dispelled i think some misunderstandings that are pr pretty prevalent out there about the what if i um so you know yeah uh you're not on discord would you consider it would you consider it if you considered it i mean it'd be pretty awesome to have you there <laughs> I lurk, I, I kind of half lurk in it, <laughs> but yeah, people are pretty much like the, pretty much is the same people that you'll see here in the chat are over there. So it, it's just that everyone is there basically at the same time. Whereas I only get to see, I don't know, like 15 to 20 of you at a time over here. So yeah, um, you can do a flute specific warm up thingy. Ooh, would love that. So if you don't mind joining our Discord, creating a Discord account and joining our Discord, and then um, just kind of, you can even save that invite link if you want. Um, uh, we would really appreciate that. I'm sure it's not just me, but I'm, I'm sure oh, so many other people would appreciate that. But yeah, there you go. So that that's kind of what's happening to me right now. Um, had a great weekend um, and, you know, we're, we're back at it today. Um, so yeah, life is great. Uh, John's doing a lot better. She's so much better. He's pretty much completely well now, except that he does have like a little bit of like very tiny lingering bits every now and then of the cough. Um, but it's more of a tickle now. So as you guys know how long it takes for, you know, a really stubborn cough to truly go away. Um, I think for mine back in early October, I was sick for two weeks. And then I think it was like a whole nother week before I wasn't even having like a tickly throat, you know, um, but it was bad. And, and I know that this thing is going around. Awesome. You will. Perfect. Well, welcome to the discord. We we're going to be so happy to have you there. It's just a great place to like lurk, hang out, chat if you want to. Um, you know, like I, I, I'm loving the fact that like, um, you know, everyone's just very welcoming of however much you want to give. You know, there's no expectation for how much to give. So, yes, the Discord is the party place. It is true. Okay, I'm going to um, go grab my microphones really quick. I won't even put you guys on the break screen. I'm just going to go grab it real quick, and then we're going to set that up, and then we will get practicing. So give me a sec. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Um, we have a uh, very convenient charging station out there, so that's why I end up bringing my uh, my microphones to go charge out there. So um, I need to clip this to myself, so I'm just gonna do that right now. Uh, Time to devolve into chaos, panic, and disaster. Ah. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to, uh, let's see, pop this and make sure that I pop it into the correct slot here. Okay, so I'm just going to see if that is going. That is going. Okay, so we're going to uh, move to that microphone. All right, here we go. We're on this microphone now. So. Uh, 
I am pretty proud of the fact that I think I've been able to more or less get it to sound almost like this really nice microphone. Um, it, the really nice microphone will still handle my loud louds and my soft softs much better than this microphone. Um, but I think quality wise, I got it to be fairly close. So, okay, we're here. Let's take out our, um, our flute. Okay. I do have my lights on. Good. So I did accidentally change up my lighting again and I kind of like how it looks like I kind of like how I have a little bit more shadow on this side um so I dimmed the lights on this side because I was playing uh Honkai Star Rail on my nice computer here the other night and um and so uh I was you know I I I, I put it to like as yellow as possible and then put it down as as low it was as it will go and then I forgot to change it back for today but I kind of like how it looks I turned it back to um like a very white light um but I kept it very low and I kind of like it you know it gives a little bit more definition to the face um haven't had a chance to look at the Woodify video yet. Um, well, I it, whenever you get to it, I hope you enjoy it. I had a grand, grand time being the absolute biggest freaking nerd in the world. <laughs> um, I got a, a wonderful response from Ali afterwards too. Um, he mentioned that uh, he also had some, uh, it, it, it gave him some good insight as to like, how people were receiving it and stuff like that and like what comparisons they would like um so um ali himself is also very happy with it so i'm very happy with that um but yeah so i'm i'm i love it so right now the video that i am working on um that made me late to today's uh practice stream is a review on this I ultimately decided that it was better to get little clips from the actual streams themselves rather than me um, like kind of filming something separate. I just, I just cannot film something separate that is as genuine as my real time reaction. <laughs> so um, I had to go and kind of like re-record my live stream. So, um, you know, like basically screen record my live stream. So I was kind of sitting there just sort of like waiting through minutes of just me going. So, um, you know, getting all that organized and then starting to edit it was definitely, definitely took a little bit more time than I expected, but yeah. Um, like, <laughs> you think you look spectacular in low light. The dark is best, so photogenic. <laughs> Uh, is the lighting so flattering today? Mm, I'm glad you guys think so too. Cause yeah, I, I was kind of like, I, I taught a couple of lessons this morning and then I was kind of looking at my, at my screen. And I'm like, why does it look good today? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Let's get up though and start practicing. Let's do this. Um, here. I'm going to turn on my Bluetooth as well. Um, let's get our practicing stuff out. Um, apologies for the slight um, scuff right now. I did not actually prepare all of this stuff ahead of time. Usually I like to kind of like get everything out and open and going but I didn't. <laughs> so we're opening things up right now as we speak. Uh, so I got my music open, got my checklist open, and then now I need to get my uh, timer open. So I'm gonna do that. Okay, bring that up here. So yeah, th there is a whole little like, a whole routine that I have to do this. Okay, I think we're good. And then the last thing we're gonna have to do when I switch over to this screen is change 
where the uh, the highlight bit is. So we'll move that all the way up. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, we are pretty much set to go. Just in case I'm going to mute my computer. Uh, we will mute that tab also just in case. Okay, we're set to go. Let's do this. Um, get my petals all out and ready to go. Gonna make sure this is working. Okay, good, good. This is working. Okay. Let's do this. Let's get our hour in. And then I will be off for the day. Well, I might, I might edit for like a bit longer after I get off stream. Hello, Michael. How are you? Happy April. Hope you had a great weekend. Okay. Oh, Discord is downloading. Yes. Yes. Then you can be nerds with us all the time over there. <laughs> Why is my lighting kind of eating today? I know, right? Exactly. Okay. Pop the ear plug in. The hair is doing its own thing today. I cannot get this piece of hair to, to stay down. <laughs> it's one of those days, guys. Okay, let's do harmonics. Okay, there. Oh, okay, there. The timer goes. There it is. It's really not bad today. It's really not bad. Um, I think there is a part of me that, like I was doing again some reflecting. I think last week I was still somewhat, like all of last week post Woodify review, I was sort of adjusting back to my flute. Like I wondered, I wonder if I changed so much of how I played, like I was doing all my chameleon stuff in my mouth to match the different woodifies. I actually wonder if I had to spend basically the rest of the week getting back to the way I normally play. That's just, I'm just thinking out loud here. I, f I feel like that was what was happening. Um, and like now I feel like I'm really like kind of coming back into my own. So I still actually have not made a decision of whether I want to purchase a Woodify. I, I can see the wonderful implications of it, but I don't really know how much of a use case I truly have for it um, because I do not do session work. Um, and I, I actually just straight up do not perform professionally regularly. I mostly do this and I do flute reviews and I teach, you know, 
So I still don't know if I'm going to purchase one. Yeah, it, exactly. I, I wonder if it was like a little bit of like a woodify overdose. Yeah, and then I had that bad tone day on day two of last week. So it's been kind of swimming in my head, this idea. Like now that I've had a few days away from playing, I've had three days away from playing. And I during the three days, I was just kind of like reflecting on like, what happened, you know? I I think so. Yeah, I mean, like, that's a that's an interesting way of putting it that my flute kind of lost a little bit of compatibility with me post review. Yeah, it's interesting. Also, Alexander, hello. I, I think I, I saw your name earlier, but I was in the middle of saying something else. How are you? Welcome to the stream. Welcome back to the stream. That is hope you're doing well. So anyway, I'm that's what I'm thinking right now. We'll see. Um, okay, so let's do now, we're on number 27, uh, using, uh, these are, uh, uh, interval tone exercises, and we are using the bass note of low E, and then we are, right now, we are slurring from the changing notes to the, to the low E, and then we will play it as written, everything slurred. Okay, let's do this. Hello, Victor. Welcome to the stream. Hello, Sean. Welcome back to the stream. How are you doing? How are you doing? Yeah, okay. That felt so much better than it did last week. Like, still a little bit of overworking to get to the low notes. Like, I can stand to relax even more on those low notes and not push quite as hard. But generally feeling a lot better than last week. Uh, yes, this is a tough one. <laughs> so generally feeling much better. I, I think I really did have a bit of a what if I overdose last week. Um, so um, I don't mind though. I think it's interesting. <laughs> but I think it's probably because I guess because like I'm a teacher um, and like that type of experience is very interesting and very insightful for me, you know? Um, is that an experience that I would maybe, uh, that I would suggest for other folks? Probably not. Um, it is making me realize that um, probably what I used to do, which is about one very serious review like that a month, um, doing one review a month like that was probably actually the way to go. Um, you know, like, uh, because then it doesn't mess with my embouchure, for example, like every week. Because you guys could see that it, it's basically taken me a whole week to come back to my own tone. Um, so 
that it that it's just very interesting to me personally. So, um, hello team, welcome back. How are you? Okay, let's do this again. This time we are going to be doing um, uh, articulation number four, which is um, slurring everything. All right, here we go. generally speaking that is going way better yeah um uh definitely can still stand to do it a, a little bit better i can definitely feel that my lips and my cheeks want to work a little harder on the low notes but i have to keep reminding them not to do that so um i want to try about uh like from the low note into the middle register notes because that's where it really starts to happen so i'm going to start that area again <laughs> So in case you guys are wondering what I'm doing, I'm trying to place it exactly where I want it to be. might be even better tomorrow. I can kind of feel like, like where it wants to sit. So um, we'll leave that for now. Just woke up. Well, good morning. I hope you have a lovely day today, team. 
can see the shift from first octave armature to middle octave armature. Yeah, there is a shift. There has to be, especially for E. <laughs> um, you know, Alexander, welcome to the madness. Because I'm going to be completely real with you. I'm also still figuring stuff out. I mean, that's kind of the point of these practice streams. So I'm just going to do my best to try and say it out loud to you guys. Also, hello, Jody. How are you? Welcome to the stream. How are you? Okay, we're going to try some circular breathing now. So trying not to plug the back of my nose. Hey, Alden. Welcome back. Awesome. Get that homework done. And then hopefully you get some time to unwind and relax as well. Very important for learning. Okay. Okay. Let's see. It's not terrible. We got a, a few good ones in there. Um, you're going to see a concert, Jody. Tomorrow night, bought tickets for this summer's Tanglewood season. <gasps> so nice. I hope you enjoy yourself. Oh, that sounds great. Okay. We shall continue with Moyi's 480 exercises. We are doing number 380 today always a mystery what I'm about to get myself into 380 so we have their little short spurts of uh, arpeggios so it looks like seventh arpeggios on G okay we'll do this
Okay, not bad, not bad. You know, I'm so glad, Alexander, that these dreams make you feel like you're like back in music school listening to people practice. I kind of feel like um, I wish that I was in a better mental and emotional state to enjoy that. So I think in a way I'm sort of reliving it myself. Uh, Jane, welcome back. How are you? Are you doing well? Hello, saxophone flutist. Welcome back as well. How are you guys? Oh, yes. Water, water uh, break. Here we go. Thank you. Okay. Shall we? Let's do this. On to the next one. Have a great dinner and have a great time making a video. Last summer, Jody, you went to seven concerts. Uh, this year, four. Ooh, to see Hilary Hahn, John Williams, film night, Jurassic Park with the Boston Pops on stage playing the score while the movie is playing. That's amazing. Oh my gosh, that sounds so cool. Alexander, you wish you paid more attention to your own practicing, might have graduated. You know what? Do you guys know that I nearly quit music school? Have I ever told this story? Um, let me know. I'm just going to do uh, another set of exercises while I wait for your responses. I don't know if I ever told you guys that I was really, really close to quitting music school.
Midnight Moth didn't know. Alexander, haven't heard it. Um, Jane, no, I was not actually going to swap to art school. That was actually before I made it into music school. Um, oh, Victor, thank you. That's so sweet of you to say. Um, so I think, hmm, you know what? Let me finish this exercise and then I'll tell the story. But I'm curious to know what you guys' like experience was. Like I um I I I absolutely do not like look down on anyone for like quitting music school or not going like not attending music school. Like I there's no shame. Um it's it is not a perfect education system that I have ranted about before <laughs> it is not a perfect education system it is not for everyone not because you know there are the strong and there, and there are the weak it's not because there are the strong and, the, and there are the weak it's more that it the, the, the education system itself is not really built for all kinds of musicians that's the thing so I'll tell my story after this, I'll finish this, but I'm curious to know what you guys' experiences were. Okay, let me finish this. I finished that so now I can properly tell this story while I um, swab a little bit so let's see uh, so for midnight moth you decided not to attend even after passing the audition and being placed in first year Wow so you you just made the decision not to go honestly Empowering. Empowering to know that you did make it in, but you decided that it was not the path for you. Um, Jane, you regret you regret quitting nursing school, had a breakdown and couldn't continue. Oh, I feel it. I feel it. I'm so sorry. Um, have I had any lifelong friends from going to school of music? Yes, I have. There's Carrie, Paul, you know? Um, So let's see. Uh, so Minai Moth started in the academic classical environment as a teenager, constantly surrounded by gossip and competition. To you, just being around the conservatory was very similar in experience. So uh, you decided to forfeit and not attend it at all. Wanted to avoid problems, gossip, competition, and confrontation. Ooh, that is hitting close to home. Hitting close to home. A university is so rough, rough though. Gosh, it's crazy. Also, cheers, Victor. Thank you. Also, I can see, Victor, you wrote the music story you grew up has provided sales for 80 years. Same family owners. That's amazing. Mm. So, Alexander, you had a similar experience. You also had, like, a breakdown, basically. So, I had a breakdown. Um, and uh, 
I just, it was just a lot of pressure. Um, and I think, so it was, I clearly recall that it happened around uh, Christmas-ish, like um, the Christmas break, winter break. Um, the It was literally the winter break before I graduated. So I had one semester left. And I uh, was very close to quitting because I felt like I couldn't continue my weekly anxiety cycle. So this is something that I do plan on making a video about someday uh, as I kind of like work through my thoughts around it, but I'll give you guys a bit of a teaser. Um, I developed what I am, what I have called now practice anxiety and it kind of just went unchecked. Um, it was just not really something that people were aware of. It, I, even I wasn't really aware of it. Um, but I felt that, um, I put the expectation on myself to, um, like unrealistic expectations on myself to um, basically just get good on the flute immediately. Like, you know, if my teacher told me to do something, uh, my brain automatically was like, I should be able to do it now. Um, and that snowballed out of control, like completely and utterly out of control. Like it got to the point where I felt like, it was pointless to even practice if I just, if I couldn't get it right. Um, and you know, that's not how practicing works. And so the mounting pressure of like having to perform for my teacher every week, it would basically mount over time, over, over the week, get really like the worst on the day of the lesson because I felt like I had to deliver um, even though like, honestly, I don't think that my teacher ever thought of it that way. Okay. But for me, it, it, like I had put that pressure on myself without even really realizing it. So it was mounting pressure all the way up until I got to the lesson. And then it didn't even matter whether the lesson went well or went poorly. It, and that's how I know that it was me. So it didn't actually matter whether the, the lesson went well or bad. After the lesson, it's just like a crash. Like I'm like full relief that like, okay, the lesson's done. I can breathe now. And then the next day I, you know, and I always would tell myself, oh, I did the lesson today. So I don't have to practice today. And then the next day I would be like, okay, I should start practicing today. But, but I have, I have six more days. I have six more days. It's fine. I, you know, like I, if I, if I, if I don't practice today, it, it's fine. And then the next day I'd be like, oh, well, you know, like, okay, like maybe I should start thinking about it, but I just, I couldn't even take my flute out. And then you can kind of see how the, the, the anxiety would mount from day to day. Like each day it was more anxiety that, oh no, I have to practice. Oh no, I have to practice. Oh no, I have to get this part right. Oh, I, I have to be able to do this. I have to, um, you know, like, and then, and then just imagining myself actually practicing and trying to get it right was so like insurmountable. Like it just felt impossible. And also like, I just felt like I, it, it felt like torture. Like it, like it, t the, even thinking about practicing felt like torture. Like how many times am I going to have to repeat this thing until I get it right? Because all, all, all I was thinking was about getting it right. Not about the like process, like the enjoying the process. There was no enjoying the process. The process itself was, I felt like was getting in the way of me getting to my goal. And then so each day that anxiety mounted and mounted and mounted. And if you go through four years of this week after week, 
anybody would go insane. Absolutely anybody would go insane. And it's like, you know what the weirdest thing is that it's not even like, you know, like a crazy amount of pressure that my teacher put on me, not even a crazy amount of pressure put on me by uh, my colleagues. It was me. It, it actually was me. And the reason why I know is, is because it did not matter what the outcome of the lesson was. Every single week this happened. So the only common denominator is me. So yeah, the, the pressure absolutely got to me. The art of procrastination, that's exactly it. Um, yeah, the, the, the Sean is saying it exactly. Doing the thing is more painful than not doing it until it's too late, then it flips and then you cram and then the cycle repeats. That's exactly it. The, it, it got to the point where even thinking about doing the thing was so bad that I couldn't make myself open up my case in order to do the thing, you know? Um, and uh, honestly though, just practicing is always way better than thinking about practice. Like thinking about practicing as in I have to get good at something. These days when I think about practicing, it's very nerdy. It's things like, oh, I wonder like, you know, I wonder if I tried this, what would happen? Or like this weekend, I was thinking about like, hmm, maybe I like messed up my embouchure too much when I was testing Woodifies on Monday. Maybe that explains why I had bad tone days and stuff like that. You know, and then like thinking about it nerdily like that makes you excited to come back to the next practice session and be like, oh, let's see what happens today, you know? But no, I was not thinking like that before. So it was just this like, week after week of just mounting anxiety every single day and then crash and then mounting anxiety and then crash and um i put myself through it like i put myself through the ringer and come winter break i very seriously actually sat my parents down and i was like i don't know if i can keep going like i at this point, I'm just so tired and I am so scared of playing the flute and of practicing the flute that like the relief of not having to do it at that time felt better to me than the potential of losing everything I had worked for up until then. Like, you know, holding on for another five months to me really felt impossible. So my parents, they did end up talking me out of it, but they did it in a very interesting way. They were like, we hear you. Your feelings are valid. Um, and, um, however, we are further along in life than you are, and you are so close to the finish line, like out of four years, you are five months away from getting the degree. And so they told me, let's start a countdown. We're going to count down every day because even as impossible and as forever as this feels, this too shall come to pass. So there, so we set up a calendar and every day together, we're like one day has finished. Cool. We'll move on to the next day. And on, on, on that particular day, you focus on the present and only the present, only focus on what you're doing that day and nothing else. Don't think about the future. Don't think about <laughs> anything. Um, of like, don't think about having to get good. You know, they're just like, you're just going to take it one day at a time. 
uh, and they're like, at the end of this, we'll take you on a cruise. <laughs> that will be our gift to you. You can relax completely on this cruise, you know, just like have a great time just fully relaxing because you know that you have done it. And um, I think for my career, my parents did the right thing. Do I think that, the, the, that this solution is the correct solution for everyone? No, I do not actually think that this is the correct solution for everyone. Um, I do not actually think that it is worth it for everyone. For me though, I feel like I came out of it. I have this experience. I relate very well to my students now. I relate very well to you guys. So I'm able to make content, which is what I like to do. I'm able to make content that actually speaks to you guys. Um, so, you know, um, like, there you go. That I nearly quit. I, I actually got close enough to quitting that I actually had a serious conversation with my parents about quitting music school, you know. Um, you all, Midnight Moth, you realize you, you might have this anxiety with your singing. You don't want it. You don't want to give it any more power than it already has. Let's go. Exactly. So, um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about in that future practice anxiety video that I'll make, cause I'm still reflecting on it right now. Um, one of the things I want to talk about is how I actually healed myself. Um, and I really healed myself by streaming my practice sessions to you guys. Cause what, what that did was it forced me to say out loud the things that I was thinking in my head. Otherwise it would be just an insanely boring stream. I, at the root of it, I'm an entertainer and I love entertaining you guys. And I love telling you guys what's going on in my head to make the stream engaging and fun. And so how else do you make a practice stream engaging and fun is to talk about what's going on inside of your head. If you talk about this stuff inside of your head, you are going to become very aware of how you talk to yourself. And it was when I started streaming my practice sessions on Twitch, that's when I discovered how abusive I was to myself. And so I started to correct the language that I used with myself. I started to kind of like, correct my, uh, I would do a lot of like, almost like cognitive behavioral, um, like therapy on myself where like, I would catch myself spiraling, thinking that I had to just get good at something. And then I'd be like, I'd stop and I'd be like, okay, I don't have a deadline. I can take my time with this. Let's enjoy this process of getting good at something, you know, like when I make a discovery, when I make a mistake and I make a discovery as to why I'm making a mistake, instead of beating myself up for saying and saying things like, oh, you should have known that before. Now I celebrate it. Like I made a very conscious decision to celebrate finding mistakes and enjoying the process of finding out why those mistakes are happening, understanding those mistakes and, um, correcting it, going through the process of correcting it. Like I had to really stop and, and tell myself, you know what, like we are going to celebrate discovering things about yourself. We're going to celebrate finding the, my weaknesses and improving them, you know, Hey Sean. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, my current thought process right now, certainly not as like, you know, uh, completely thought through as I would like to, but since you guys brought it up, I, I don't want to hide it that I absolutely, I was, I want to say 99% there. I almost quit music school. I was like, I was that 1% away from quitting. If my parents had not had that conversation with me, I would have quit. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. Um, just wanted you guys to know you're not alone. Um, but yeah, my parents really, they really, 
um, they did not push me. They did straight up tell me if at the end of this conversation and you have had a, a little bit of time, some more time to think about it, because you know we're on winter break. So they're like, think about it, sleep on it. And if at the end of another week, your final decision is that you still want to quit, they were like, we will support you. You know, like your, your mental health is more important than you getting this degree. However, if you do get this degree, you can make, you, you can make your own career after this. They're like, you know, screw what people think about like how good you have to be or anything like that. You can make your own career. They're like, we believe in you. We think that you are, well, one, weird enough to <laughs> come up with your own career, right? And, but they're like, they did actually give me the permission to quit. They did not actually tell me that I couldn't quit. They, you know, but they gave me time. They told me to think about it. So if ever you guys are wondering why I always take my sweet time reflecting, it's because I have had experiences, like very deep, profound experiences like this, where waiting an extra week to think about something can really make a big difference in your life. Like the crazy butterfly effect from my parents giving me the permission to quit if I really still decided to do it after one week of reflection. I would not be practicing in front of you guys right now if they did not let me do that. Yeah. Yeah, my parents are great. Like they, I, I hope that I can offer this type of um, guidance to my own kids one day. So, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, because I think at the end of the day, they, they were having that conversation for me, not for them. Um, and, and that's really something that I hope to keep um, uh, in, in my own way of teaching my potential future kids. So, thank you. But there you go. That's the story. I knew it was going to take a while, so I wanted to make sure that I finished this section of practicing. <laughs> but yeah, guys, um, I nearly quit. I, I was very close to it. I very nearly did it. Um, and I do not actually think that it is a heroic thing that I continued. I just think that for what I ended up doing with my life, it was the correct decision for me and nothing more. It is, I don't want you guys to glorify me continuing to soldier through music school do not glorify it, okay? There's nothing to glorify. It just so happens that for my path and my career and my life, this was the right decision to make. Um, and, um, but it is not heroic. There's nothing heroic about it. There's nothing, quote, strong about it. There's nothing, not, none of that. It just happened to be the correct decision for me and that is why I'm able to make these streams for you guys right now. Yeah. Oh, Jane. <laughs> yep. Shout out to Mr. And Mrs. C. Exactly. That's them. Okay. Let's continue. Let's see what we can jam in in the, in 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 uh in ten minutes. <laughs> Whatever. We'll just keep going. So we'll do some uh. Q56, which is from the development section. We are going to do some compression exercises on it first before running it as written. So we decided to do that starting last week. Okay.
So something very interesting there is that this exercise is telling me that I am wanting to skip the high G, which is not something I noticed before. So we're going to play it as written. going to do the rest of the recap. Let's do it. hope yet of that part feeling really really good i can feel it i can feel it in my fingers have they added the e bear to cadenza live accompaniment oh thank you oh you guys are so welcome for you know what I'm so happy to share my experiences with you guys. Did my grandparents play music instruments? Yes, my grandfather actually played the flute, but he lost the flute in a in a um, move. But they think that the movers stole it. Yeah. 
<laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, my parents, my parents are fantastic. Um, oh, no, I hope everything's okay where you are, Deanna. That does not sound good. Oof, oof, stay safe. Please stay safe. Every time you hire movers, they've kept a box or two. Just can never predict which box. Ugh. Oh, that is so annoying. just had a very nerdy thought. I wonder if this extreme compression exercise is making it so that you get you you understand the feeling of moving super fast between two notes and then if you alternate it then you understand how to move super fast between the other notes and so together when you play it regularly it feels slow because your fingers are not moving as fast. Hmm.
I'm just going to check because I can see that my time is, is, is out. So I want to see if how John is doing. Oh, all right. You gamers out there will love this, but, um, he apparently helped level me, um, a set of relics in, um, Honkai Star Rail. So, um, Okay, he's fine. So I just want to make sure he didn't want me to like grab anything from like grocery store or anything like that. Okay, cool, cool, cool. We're good. So we're going to keep going. But uh, yeah. Oh, I love my hubs. Okay. Let's... Onwards. Everything's good. Just wanted to make sure because sometimes he wants me to like, um, you know, uh, oh, I should probably get rice started after this. Okay. I do need to cook some rice after this. Um, let's finish this up though. I am using floor pedals to go between mics. <laughs> it's pretty convenient. Okay, there is hope. There is hope of that feeling better, doing better. Okay, last section.
swap, swap, swap. Thank you, Jane. All right. All right, all right. Um, we got to do it the other way. I did also want to do the last, there's that last little bit that's fast at the end. I do also want to do that um, compression as well. So we'll do that really quick and then I'll go back and do it again. Greg, how are you? Welcome back. I hope you've been doing well. You also finished up some practicing. I'm finishing up mine too. How are you doing? Um, since you are the type of person that does session work, um, you don't have to, but I think it might be interesting if you didn't see it yet, to take a look at my last review of Woodify Rings. They're, they they have some very interesting implications for if you do a lot of recording work, and I know that you do. So, um, um, I'll leave the explanation for how they work for that video, but I thought of you while I was doing those reviews, like that particular review. So, um, yeah, I, uh, you don't have to get one. I, I'm not saying you should, but it's interesting to think about is more what it is, you know? So what is that last note? Uh, uh F7, a very flat F7 though, but it's an F7. <laughs> okay. We're going to play this as written.
seven, a little hit and miss today. Oh, interesting. So your recording setup is weird and varied. You have your mic set, mic at different angles and positions near your flute, depending on the piece. That makes sense to me. That absolutely makes sense to me. Um, because depending on where you listen to a flute, um, depending on what it's playing, it can, can sound very different. Um, Mm -hmm. I know that my setup right now is really only set up for this very specific purpose that I use it, which is to try to emulate as if you guys are in the same room as me. Um, so I don't actually think that this is a uh, really good recording setup for actually recording things. Um, yeah, I, I don't actually think it's, it's, it's good for that. Um, I think what you're doing is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to like move the microphone around according to what you're playing. Um, but yeah, so mine though is specifically for making reviews, for teaching online live, for practicing live. Um, you know, I'm trying to emulate the, the, the feeling of you guys being in the same room as me. So, um, but is that actually really good for like recording, like actual session work? I don't actually think so, but anyway, um, that was okay. We'll take it. We're just going to do a tiny bit of rapid as wildfires. And then I really have to go cause I should probably make rice. Um, but okay. Let's do a little bit of this. Oh, see you later, Sean. Have a wonderful day. Rest of your evening. We're done. <laughs> I am already crazily over time and I really need to make some rice after this. Otherwise we will not be eating for a very long time because we are those people who own a Zojirushi um, rice maker and it does not make rice in the usual 20 minutes or so that like <clears throat> one of those like, you know, $15, $20 rice cookers do. <clears throat> the Zojirushi tastes like a whole hour to make rice, but it is fluffy and delicious and wonderful. So anyway, I need to get going doing that, but I will um, clean up first. So let's see. So for Greg, for example, something jazzy, you point more towards the lip plate, which gets a more airy, fluffy projecting tone. Yes, which is perfect for jazz. Yep, yep, yep. Um, whereas more classical stuff, you point more equally toward the upper end of the neck and keys. Yes, that makes sense because that's, that's a lot of where the resonance happens, right? Gabriel, hello. Let's see. So for Gabriel, you, sometimes when you record some piece, colors are not the same or the pianos and for, yes, yes. See, uh, <clears throat> there is no, no two takes are the same. I can assure you of that. Absolutely no two takes are the same. Um, oh, you're, you guys are so welcome for streaming. You flute, hello. Uh, let's see, you were one of the first content creators you came across when you first started. Just wanna say thank you. Oh, oh, thank you for, for like sticking around and also for showing up to say that. That's so sweet of you to say, I hope you've been enjoying the flute. Yes, have you been enjoying? I hope you, you enjoy the flute because, you know, we were actually just talking earlier today about how um, I nearly quit music school. I, I was like 1% of, uh, of my decision away from, from quitting music school. Um, and honestly, I think seeing, seeing like 
comments like yours makes it all worth it makes it all completely worth it to me um and like i'm glad i stuck it through i'm really glad i stuck it through because it was the correct decision for me so again i do want to make it very clear that um quitting music school or like nursing school or whatever um it i don't think it is something to be ashamed of i i don't think that sometimes the reason why you quit actually most of the times if you quit something it's because it was not right for you and that's all there is to it there is nothing heroic about sticking it out to the end it doesn't make you strong it doesn't make you weak to um to quit or anything like that there is no strong there is no weak there is just whether it is the right decision for you or not and that is it um, nothing to be ashamed of, nothing like that. So, you know, um, bamboo basket. No, no, no. Zojirushi is, uh, you're talking about Zojirushi, right? So Zojirushi is a Japanese brand. Um, it's a Japanese, uh, the, like appliance brand, um, not just appliances, but they also make this stuff. So my, my thermos is also Zojirushi. Uh, it's a really great thermos, keeps cold things very cold for a very long time and also keeps hot things hot for a very long time. Like if you put like scalding hot tea or coffee in here, five hours later, it's still going to scald you. You know, oh, I think Hubs is back. Um, video game music is what stopped you from quitting the flute back when you first began. Well, video game music also is helping me continuing to keep going. <laughs> I'm actually like using video game music to explore expression, vibrato, uh, dynamics, tone color, that type of thing. And I am bringing what I find over from video game music over to classical repertoire. So ultimately my goal in playing um, in, in sort of the expression part of playing the Iber is to make it sound like I'm playing video game music. I do not want to sound like I am playing repertoire, you know? I want to sound like I'm playing video game music. Is that blasphemous? Probably. Do I care? No. It's something I want to do and I want to try because it's not hurting anyone. I want to see what happens to the e-bear if you play it like video game music. Like, what happens to it? What happens to, like, to, to how you do vibrato? What happens to your tone color, to your, uh, to your dynamics and stuff like that? Like, like, you know, what happens? I want to know, you know? You, if you've been enjoying the flute, good. You've been close to quitting, but when you hear people like me play, you remember how much you love this darn instrument. I feel you on that so hard. I love this instrument so much, and yet I also almost quit. I was 1% away. Like, in terms of like, you know how like, you kind of like build up towards a decision to do something or to quit something? Well, I was 1% away from quitting. I was 1% away. Anyway, I have gotten all my things cleaned. The hubs is back. I should probably make rice before we have to wait too long to have dinner. Um, but yeah, life is great. I had a great day today. Oh my gosh, I feel like such a nerd and it's fantastic. I love being a nerd. Um, you know what, actually, I'm just gonna close off using this microphone. That way, um, I don't have to like worry too much about the volume of my speaking. Um, the yin yang electric skillet me wants, yes, yes. Uh, but yeah, Zojirushi is a fantastic, fantastic, um, whatchamacallit, uh, the, 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 the rice cooker. It's expensive. <laughs> we didn't even get the highest, um, the the highest uh, uh the model and and it is is freaking amazing um 
we have tried making brown rice with it before but it made it so messy that we like never did it again but it was fluffy brown rice so if you're like okay with you know some cleanup um in our experience the zojirushi made the fluffiest brown rice that we've ever had it was amazing but we usually we're we're you know we, we usually make white rice i would say um but you know it takes a good long time but the reward is fantastic just like practicing practicing takes a good long time but the reward is fantastic so you have to learn to enjoy the process that is what i did not do when i was in music school and that actually nearly made me quit i didn't learn how to enjoy the process until like five years five years ago now i think five years ago uh, when i started um streaming on twitch so i'll talk about that more in like its own video someday but um for now you guys get a little sneak peek in that so love you all very much Please stay happy, healthy, and safe. Take care of yourselves to the best of your abil 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 ability. And I will see you guys next time. Right? Okay? Take care of yourselves. No music without the musician. All right. Laters, guys. Oh, see you later, Steven. Bye.